Hello everyone, Dr. Ziya Tahir here. This video tutorial is about 2D beam analysis in ANSYS Workbench. And the beam is I beam with a point load and two uniformly distributed load. A steel beam is shown in the figure. There is a steel beam. It is, there is one point load acting as 20 kN and two UDL are acting. And there is a one fixed port and then there are two roller ports here. Modulus of elasticity of beam material is 200 gigapascal. Poisson's ratio is 0.3. And the cross section of beam with units in millimeters that is shown here. And that is the I cross section, symmetrical I section is there. So this is a work example from chapter number 13 beam elements of the book introduction to finite element analysis using MATLAB and Abacus. So it's here. Uh, that is work example. And I'll verify results. And this is workbench results with results of this example. And those results are like in the form of reaction forces and displacements they are given so that is chapter 3 of the book introduction to finite element analysis using matlab and abacus so this one is a little bit modified for that one uh, compared to that work example so here uh, required is reaction at fixed port at this fixed port maximum deflection along the beam maximum bending movement along the beam and maximum bending stress along the beam. So this is a uh, second lecture of this uh, series. So you can watch one, uh, this 2D beam. So this is a more detailed one. Like uh, most of analysis here are being done in that playlist and says workbench structural analysis. So steps for analysis of IB. So need to start structural static structural project, then need to add material, then uh, in the geometry need to sketch that model. And then again in the model, assign material to the geometry and then mesh. Then in the setup static structural apply boundary condition in terms of sports and then apply loads. And then the solution, what is required, that reaction at fixed port, then uh, deformation, like deflection in y direction, then bending movement along the beam, and then normal stress. And then the results, so these are the results. So these are the steps which I'll follow to solve that I beam. The first step is to start static structural project in the workbench. So that is a workbench and here is analysis system. So in analysis system, need to start a static structural project. So that is a static structural project and these are seven steps which I have just described. So these steps I'll follow to analyze that beam. So save that project and I have saved it as beam 2D. So I saved that. Next step is in engineering data need to add material and that is a linear elastic isotropic elasticity. So for that one here, double click on engineering data. So when you double click on engineering data, the default material here is a structural steel. I'm going to disable that and I'm going to add a new material here, steel. And here, so that is created. Now there's a question mark. So from linear elastic isotropic elasticity need to drag in there. And then here the Young's modulus with the units of uh, Pascal 200 e raised power 9 and then Poisson's ratio as 0.3. So that material is being added. So save it and then so that material is saved. Now I'm going to close that material. So now you can see that the take on engineering data and the new material given in the problem that is being. Next step in the geometry. Select analysis type, basic geometry options, line bodies, and analysis is 3D. So for that one here in the geometry, so basic geometry option is the line bodies and 3D. Always a 2D problem, but uh, 
if you select here 2D, so workbench will not solve it. So that's why I need to keep it as 3D. And then the next one is need to start design modeler. And for that one, in the geometry, right click on the geometry. So you have two options, select face claim geometry and design modeler geometry. I'm using that design modeler. And so that is a design modeler. And in design modeler, need to sketch that. So I'm going to sketch that as a line with a span four, five, and seven meter. And in the design modeler, here in XY plane, I'm going to plot it. So that is XY plane, and that is a modeling. And here you have sketching. So go to setting, and in the setting, grid on and snap on, and then units because here the units are in meter for that beam so i need to change that unit into meters and major grid spacing i'm keeping at five million five meter and then then uh, minor straps per major they are five so now once it's set then need to go to sketch and a line so the first line is four that is four meter then the second line is five meter and then the third line is seven meter so dimension can be added to that one the general and then that is four that is five and that is seven so if any direction the dimension need to change so that can be changed here like as seven can be changed to eight okay so now that all sketching is done so sketch is done next concept lines from sketches and then generate so in the modeling here is a sketch in the concept line from lines from sketches apply then generate so now you can see here so that lines are and that is the part okay so now that beam is modeled from sport to sport and then here the, to apply that node we need to create a partition as you can see here so that's a line body and i select that one so that one here on the line body so that is one that is the second span and that is the third span. Now need to create a partition for that one. For that one need to go concept, split edges and generate. So here concept, split edges and then need to select edge. So that edge is selected. Now apply and then <clears throat> definition fractional or you can split by delta split by location so i am using fractional i am going to divide that into two halves and then now generate so once it is generated now you can see that so there are in between that there are two now that is being split edge is being split into two Now the next one is need to create a section and there is a cross section is I and these are the dimensions of that I beam and all units are in millimeters. So for that one first I need to change units to millimeters then concept here cross section and here you have I section there. So that is I section. So need to add values to that one. So now W1, that W1 correspond to that lower web. That is the length of lower web. So both webs are 172. So that is 172. And the upper one is also. 172 so w1 so both webs are now here both are 172 and then that that w3 
W3 is the overall height of the section and overall height of the section is 359. So that is 359 and then and then T1 and T2. So T1 is the here you can see so that is the T1. T1 is the thickness of lower web and that is the T2 that is the thickness of upper web. So now the thickness of lower and upper web both they are 13. So that is 13. So if uh, these are the thickness of the flange, flanges. And for the web, that is the web T3. That is the thickness of, there is T3. That is the thickness of web. And the thickness of web is, the thickness of web is 8 millimeters. So then I can add here 8 millimeter. And now all these dimensions so they are being added to that one so 172 millimeters that is the thickness of both flanges 172 and then overall height is 359 and then thickness of upper and lower flange that is 13 and thickness of web is 8 so now once all that dimensions are added so now i'm going to create that one and rename that as I section. Once that section is being defined, the next one go to line body and assign cross section. And for that one, here is a line body. And I'm going to give I section and that is being generated. So now in the view, I can see cross section solids. And then you can see that that is the orientation of the beam. The orientation of the beam is not as what we are looking for because the load is being applied in the vertical direction, which is y axis. And we need to change that beam, orientation of the beam, so that it can carry load. So to change beam orientation, select beam as edges and then rotate it by minus 90. So for that one here, because I want to rotate it by minus 90 towards clockwise. So for that one, select that edges, then box selection. So with the box selection, you can see all that is being selected. So alignment mode is selection. Cross section alignment is the plane normal. Okay, and then alignment x, y, and z is not required, so just rotate by minus 90 degrees. And make sure that here the units you have in degrees. So now that is here, you can see that it is being beam section is being there is orientation of that, and that is what is required. So now with this one, that geometry part is done. Next step, need to start model. And for that one here, double click on the model. So that is Ensys Mechanical started. And then what is required here, geometry, need to assign material in the geometry. But before that, you need to change the units, go to home and units and unit standard units that meter, Newton, kg, or otherwise you can change units from here. And then you can change units from there. So the first one in the geometry, so there's a question mark on line body and the material assignment is steel. So if, because in the material I have, disabled that structural steel. So if you're not going to disable that structural steel, then by default, it will assign that structural steel to that. Next step is mesh. And for that one, here you have mesh. So I am going to element size, I'm going to give it as one meter. And then in the mesh, 
generate mesh so that mesh is being generated so now you can go to the display and you can see that cross section and for that one you can see these are the meshes or otherwise uh, in the display in the preferences you can show node number and element number to apply changes so these are that are the nodes for that so now this is being meshed next step in the setup static structural need to apply boundary conditions and boundary condition for this case are fixed and roller supports so fixed and roller supports like one is a fixed and other two are other three are roller and for that one click on static structural environment and you have here fixed support that is a fixed support and then scoping method is in matrix selection so i'll click here vertex and then here with the box selection i'll select that vertex apply so that is a fixed support on that and the next fixed support is uh, roller support is somewhere here and for roller support need to select displacement so that is a displacement and then that is at a four meter so somewhere here that is apply and that is the displacement and now for roller support need to restrict that y so now for that one so that is a displacement and i'm going to rename that as roller one okay and then the, again in the environment displacement and somewhere here is the second one apply matrix selection and need to keep that zero and that one roller 2 and then finally again the displacement here apply and that is 0 and then name rename it as roller 3 so now these boundary condition all those boundary conditions are being applied that is a b c these are three roller and then there is one fixed support so next step is in uh, static structural environment loads you need to apply force so concentrated loads at force and udl as line pressure and the scoping method for concentrated force is vertex and for line pressure is edge so 20 kN is being acted as 2 meter from fixed support and for that one click on static structural and then there is a force here so force that is a point load and the battery selection for that one here is the point two meter apply and then defined by components and minus 20 kilonewton in y direction that is required and here you can see that is being applied that is a point load and then uh, here in the loads you have that here is a line pressure so line pressure i am going to rename that as udl1 and udl1 is from so udl1 is from 4 to 9 meter and it's uh, it's 4 kilonewton so then udl1 so from here is by default to change to the edge so then that edge is selected apply and then defined by components and then in y direction it is minus 4 kilonewton 4 into e raised power minus 3 so here is 4 minus 4 okay so that one udl1 is there and then again uh, in the loads you need to go to line pressure and then that line pressure i am going to name it as udl2 and that is going to apply on that edge and defined by components and it is in the y direction and its value is minus 10 kilonewton so that is minus 10 e raised power 3 
So now you can see here is one concentrated force. I am going to name it as point load. So point load. And then that is the UDL point load is minus 20 kilonewton. Then UDL is minus 4 kilonewton per meter. UDL2 is minus 10 kilonewton per meter. So all three loads are being applied. You can see here. The next one in the solution need to request add in the solution and then reaction at fixed support. So at fixed support there will be uh, two reaction one for uh, forces and then the moments and for that one in the solution click on the solution and in the probe you need to go force reaction. So force reaction at fixed support. So I am going to rename that as force reaction at fixed support. And then same in the probe. Moment reactions at fixed support. So moment reaction at fixed. Okay. And so now like as probe reaction and boundary condition support name is a fixed support. So that here these two are done. The next one, a deformation required in vertical direction and for that one, directional deformation need to select scoping method with matching section and orientation is Y axis. So for that one now, here are the deformation, directional deformation, I'm going to rename that as in Y direction and the matrix selection is all bodies and then here you'll have that Y axis. So that directional deformation is added in the solution. Next is in the beam results need to add bending moment and for that bending moment scoping method is with matrix selection and see here it is y axis. I'm going to explain that why is that y axis. So here uh, in beam results that is a bending moment and say total bending moment I'm not going for total bending moment and it is directional bending moment. And in the display, I can see that results of that. So initially, when uh, in the design modeler, the beam was selected, so it was oriented other way. So we have changed its orientation and only for beam results in the solution that only for beam results, it is the it, it will calculate by rotating that one. So actually, actually initially, uh, the moments we calculate about Z axis. About Z axis, but because it is rotated, so then we need to find out along Y axis directional bending moment about Y axis. The next one is maximum bending stress is required, and for that one, I'm going to use that normal stress. And the scoping method is geometry selection, and then orientation is X axis. Now, for this one, here you can see. There is nothing in the stress or strain. So to get that one, you need to click on the solution. And in the solution, it's a beam section results. So I'll say here, yes. When you do that beam section results, now you can see you have the stresses. So actually, I am interested in the normal. Uh, so bending stress, definitely that when the beam is going to bend with the application of load. So that is similar as normal stress. So I am going to use that normal stress here. And then for the normal stress, orientation is X axis. So now all that parameters are added to the solution. The next one is solved and it is pretty much straightforward and simple. Just click on the solution and solve. It will take a little bit time for that all to here. To get uh so here are green ticks on that it means that all is solved so now there are green ticks on all that so solution is done the result first need to find reactions and for that reactions here you have like fixed force reaction so reaction at fixed port so you can see that there is only in y direction because the loads are only applied in y direction 13.7 kilonewton and that in z direction that is just zero about zero and the moment 
so the moment here in x direction that is like almost zero y is almost zero and only in the z direction that is 14743 and these results are very much in line with the directional bending moment when you will get that the next is uh, maximum deflection and the maximum deflection i requested in y axis and for that one here directional deformation in y axis and then i'm looking for maximum and minimum so there, these are the values so for better visualization i'm going to select that in millimeter so the maximum uh, directional deformation so then the maximum value can be found using probe and here and then there so actual maximum deformation is 6.1749 millimeter because it is taking the magnitude that's why it is showing here maximum and minimum so that's the maximum uh, deflection is somewhere under that second udl which is 6.1832 that is the value of that so the next one need to find bending moment maximum bending moment and for maximum that is a directional bending moment and directional bending moment i requested in y axis and then here is a maximum value there and then here is the minimum value so when i probe the values for that so here it is maximum Okay, so somewhere there, and then and then it is somewhere there. Okay, so the bending moments in Newton meter. So here you can see that there is a minimum value, the magnitude of that is 43047. So that is the maximum magnitude of bending moment next is bending stress which is actually normal stress so for that one here is a normal stress and you can see that normal stress is maximum and minimum that is at that point sorry so that is uh, so here you can see like on the top it is minimum and on the bottom it is maximum and the values are exactly same for the maximum and minimum and that is somewhere below that uh, second udl which is 10 kN per meter and then here the down it is is positive which is tension and the upper one is in compression and you can see that it is going to change from maximum value to minimum value in a pattern so somewhere here exists the neutral axis and then similarly here that is the other point at that other point you can see that if i use the probe to get the values and these two values so they look uh, in magnitude the same but their direction uh, like their signs are opposite so the upper one is in uh, that one positive is tension and this one is in compression and then the third one somewhere here under the point load which is somewhere around here so let me get the values using that probe so then these values they are the same but opposite in direction so then again here is tension and that on the top is compression so this way we can find out bending stress in the beam now in the end summary and these are the steps which i have followed and then first of all in the workbench you need to start a static structural project then need to add a material here i have added steel material then the next one is in the design modeler need to sketch that one and uh, what is the new uh, compared to the previous video i have 
separate that edge and then I have rotated cross section. And then in the model, in the model need to first in the geometry need to assign material, then mesh. I have used that uh, element size as one. Then you need to apply that support, fix support, and roller support one, two, three. Then need to apply point load, then apply a UDL, then apply another UDL, and then required is here is the reactions, and that is the force reaction at fixed support, and that is the moment reaction at fixed support, and then vertical deflection, and then bending moment, maximum bending moment was required, and then then the maximum bending stress is required. So this is all about this one is all about the summary of this video tutorial. I hope you like this video. So you can leave your comments for feedback. Thank you very much for watching. So please subscribe for more videos on MCS Workbench.